Telemedicine, testosterone, is it doomed? I don't think so. Today's video is about the proposed law changes for telemedicine testosterone, of course. And I want you guys to really watch this full video because I really did a lot of research for this because I'm a medical physician and I've talked to a lawyer next week. So part two of this series will be where I interview my friend, Rick Collins, Esquire. He's an attorney. He's really the anabolic attorney. I mean, this guy's bad ass. You want to check this guy out at Rick Collins, E-S-Q in Instagram. And you want to pay attention next week where I interview Rick about the legal aspects of this law being broken down. Rick has already done one article about this with muscular development. And he has had at least one very good interview uh, on a video. So you want to watch this stuff because, guys, the influencers that are out there love some of you guys, but you, you're panicking, which I understand, but a lot of stuff you're saying is wrong. So let me break it down for you guys. Here we go. First off, I don't think it's gonna be that bad. Prior, before the pandemic, I'm gonna talk about, because I have experience, I've been, for reference, I've been prescribing testosterone appropriately as a healthcare provider since my residency days in 2002, and as a private physician since 2005. So I really have skin in the game and I know exactly what's going on as far as what it was like before the pandemic and during the pandemic. <clears throat> and I think I know what's going to happen uh, from the Fed perspective. But let me lay it out. Let me lay it out. The current situation <clears throat> is this. The Department of Health and Human Services is planning for the Federal Public Health Emergency Act, that pandemic act, to expire on May 11th, 2023. The last three years, it's been, it's been more than three years, I can't believe it, that the Fed and the states, of course, have appropriately adjusted laws and waived the laws, and I leave that to Rick, I'll leave that to the, the, the legal experts appropriately during that time to allow people to have access to appropriate telemedicine services. And that was over three years. Now, on February 24th, 2023 of this year, the DEA announced proposed rules for permanent telemedicine flexibilities. Okay, guys, I have dissected this because it affects me as a healthcare provider. I know exactly what I've been uh, doing, and so many of my patients have been contacting us for months now, so we're ready for this. Here's what we know. Again, this is straight from the law and from that February 24th, 2023 DA announcement. You could look at this. Now, here's what's going on straight up. It does not affect non-controlled drugs, number one. Number two, telemedicine consultations <clears throat> by a patient that has a prior in-person physical examination and working with that provider is also not affected. So if that provider has seen the patient, this is straight from line items. How it can be interpreted, we're gonna to have to ask um, Rick Collins, the attorney next week. And also there's discussion of, which is complex with referred providers in the state that the patient lives, the provider has to have a, a DEA license, which not all, providers have, which is very interesting. Next, and what's really, really at hand here is the controlled uh, drugs. So I'm gonna refer and discuss today, we're gonna work on the controlled three to five non-narcotic uh, medications, because that's what we're talking about here. Not other medications, buprenorphine, not other controlled drugs, patients that have healthcare issues and opioid dependence issues, my heart goes out to these people, chronic pain patients, because 
that's going to be a whole nother deal. And the Fed, I think, is looking at the, the real narcotic drugs, guys. They're not, they're not focusing. Again, we can get crazy on this. I can get crazy on this because you, you guys know that I am here as a leader for men on androgens. But we have to tease out what's really going on here from a legal, accurate standpoint without really getting political. We have to, of course, we know there's political. And I think we're going to ride on some political coattails, which is going to be great for us. Just hear me out. So here's what's going on for us, for, for men on androgens that have enjoyed access to telemedicine under this, this, this telemedicine law that's going to expire, and now they're going to have new laws. Okay. So it's for testosterone. Testosterone, guys, is a class three non-narcotic. Okay, so that's the scale. That's the focus we're looking at. If you've already, if they're gonna, they're gonna grandfather, if you're in, if you're in already relationship, you're gonna see you're a different status. But if you, if after this law comes out, it's currently May 11th, 2023, we're not there yet, right? We're, it, this is, I think, what is it, April? April 2nd today, I'm filming this. So they're going to they're gonna say that for the after that law comes out, you'll get a 30-day supply and you're going to have to either go in person to that healthcare provider in that 30-day period or work with a physician locally that has a DEA license that has to make a referral. And I know it's complex because it, that's going to be so much work. They have to you have to find your doctor, a healthcare provider, has a DEA license. Not all providers have a DEA license. They may just have a state license. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to talk to that. And that doctor may have to sit with you on a telemedicine conference call to the doctor in the state that's providing testosterone. It's going to be a lot. That's, <clears throat> that's what the law says, and some people will have to do that. So, But here's what's going on. The telemedicine relationship that was established during the public health emergency period from March 16, 2020 to May 11th, technically now proposed 2023, will have will not be affected. Those those people, which are, these are you guys, you're already in this relationship with a telemedicine provider, right, for testosterone. They're going to extend, listen to this. This is where all the other YouTubers, they didn't mention this. But they, didn't, they didn't look deep, in, deep into the details because they're not an attorney and they're not a doctor like me. That's, I have to live by this. So they say they're going to extend this, this waiver an additional 180 days. The new deadline for these people will be November 2023. That's great news, guys. Or later, if they actually extend, as you know, things get extended, that May 11th, 2023 change for the expiration of, of this, uh, the law, the public health uh, emergency law that we're under since 316, 2020. So, and guys, there's nothing in this proposed law that says you have to see the doctor every 30 days for refills. Rick mentioned that on one of his last videos, uh, interviews I just watched yesterday. And I said, I, I, I check that out. See if Rick is right. And Rick is right. There's nothing in there that says for once you establish or reestablish this after that 30-day period, and if you have, you have 180 days to see this, the 30 days doesn't apply if you're currently in a relationship. So guys, getting in a relationship now with a good telemedicine provider, not some fly-by-night anti-aging place. There are some good places out there, guys. I'm not, not here to hate. There's some good places. And then with, the, with me and my information and the Anabolic Doc app, you could have a great uh, future going forward being uh, healthy because I provide the information, you work with this, with your, get your testosterone from a good source, and then we all work together, right? That's gonna be really cool from an informational standpoint, never medical advice. So what I think is going on here, you're not gonna have to worry about the 30-day refill. You know, Greg DeSet, love Greg. Greg, you're awesome. So many different guys, talk, you have to go see the provider every 30 days to get a refill. No, that's just initially. And then it's going to probably, in my opinion, go back to the way it was before the pandemic. I remember, you know, Florida has been doing this for a long time. You had to go to Florida, see the doc, and then you go back and then 
they used to make you come down once a year. Boom. See, I think, but there's no hard rule for that. Rick Collins, you got to help with this. Real, real lawyers and and medical, the medical legal aspect of this stuff, we got to learn. We got to find out what is it going to be. We don't know if it goes back to the way it used to be. It's going to be better because they're going to give you a 30-day period to get go down to see the doc. And if you have an existing relationship, you have 180 days. Guys, i doing the research. I did it for you guys. Now, here's something. I'm not being a wise guy here, and this is not for political. I leave that stuff away. The fact is that two senators, Elizabeth Warren and Ed Markey from Massachusetts, Democratic senators, have asked Joe Biden administration to loosen restrictions on testosterone access for transgenders. Guys, it is interesting. It's weird bedfellows that now we're in bed with the transgender group. But guys, don't argue it. This is good stuff. All get along because I respect that group of people. It's a very small group of people, but it's interesting, yes, that men on testosterone seem like we're in the bottom of the barrel and 99.9% .9 of the prescriptions are for guys like us, but these big senators and all the attention goes for the smaller group. But guys, don't argue it. Get behind it. You see, this could be a great thing. So it is what it is. What's right on the coattails? Who cares? Okay. See? See? So now, <clears throat> what I also want to bring up in addition to this politics, which is good, where I don't think the, this proposed law is going to be too damning and dooming to testosterone because of what I just mentioned. The transgender group. We're riding on the coattails of the transgender guys. That's awesome. Okay. Listen to this. 2016. The FDA put out a warning on testosterone products for abuse and dependency, withdrawal, and depression for testosterone. Here's my thinking. With this, and you could see the link, in, you could see the link right here. They asked for people that were concerned, physicians, healthcare providers, and consumers. That's you guys. You're a consumer. If you're in America, you're a consumer. You can go to the MedWatch adverse event report program. The link will be right here. You could see it. And you could talk about that you're on testosterone and you're concerned because what's going to happen to all these men that during this three-year time period that have been enjoying on testosterone, they're on testosterone and they're going to go into withdrawal. The FDA said it in 2016. We got them right there. They can't neglect this, guys. Make noise. Contact your congressmen, senators. Guys, don't be crazy. Don't. It's hard for me not to get crazy because I really had to be focused for this. And you can't be political you, you, because it's just not going to work. You got to be. You got to be accurate, and you got to be like Rick Collins would be. You got to be very focused. We have data here. 2016, the Fed put an increased warning, a big warning on testosterone. I saw it in 2016. And it was interesting. They said abuse and dependency. Fact check this, guys. Look at all this stuff. And why wouldn't we use that? So now you have all these guys on testosterone from telemedicine clinics. The last three years, tens of thousands, maybe millions, a couple mil maybe, maybe three million. We don't even know the numbers. It seems like no one cares. Interesting. I care. And now they're going to withdraw if they can't get testosterone. These are prior guys, not new guys. I already told you what to do about that. You're prior. You already have a relationship with a telemedicine uh, provider, and I'm giving you all this information. The Fed has to listen to this. They have to ease up. Again, guys, no hate. Don't post hate here. Post real comments on how we could move the ball progressively downstream here to help people on testosterone, including women and transgender people. What to do? Here's what you can do. I'll wrap it up here. You could talk to your local provider, a nurse practitioner, a doctor, a, any mid-level practitioner, they're called physician's assistant, in your state that has the ability to write for testosterone. It's state by state. You could tell them that you've enjoyed testosterone, you're doing well, you're concerned for this, and maybe they could help you pick up. Now, with the Anabolic Doc app, you could have all access to information from the ABCs, 
the access to me on Zoom group meetings, even labs in your state without a doctor's prescription to watch your red blood cells in your iron, your testosterone, your estrogen, your PSA, your lipids. Guys, I'm helping you here. With all this information, you can do it, at least in America. I'll, guys outside America, I love you guys, but first like, I gotta take care of the, my American brothers and we gotta work, move forward on this. Next is you guys, but I love you guys in Australia, in the UK, in India, Pakistan, all over the world, Central, South America. Please stay on board and follow, I'm here to help. But why wouldn't you talk to your providers, you guys? And just say, don't threaten, just say, I'm on testosterone from the telemedicine clinic during the pandemic period. I love it, here are my concerns, can you please help me? And I promise I'm gonna work with uh, Dr. O'Connor, not from a medical standpoint, from an educational standpoint, information with the app. And the app will help that doctor understand testosterone because it's very complex, guys. And even the telemedicine guys, they, they're working with me all the time, always looking at my app, always looking at my information because I live, sleep, eat, and breathe this stuff, guys. And I'm an internal medicine doctor and I've devoted my whole life to just helping men on androgens because it's, it's a full day job. I call it testosteronology. You guys know that. Next, go see your telemedicine clinic. If you already have an existing relationship, it looks like you have till November, not, not 30 days. You have till November. Fact check it, guys. But we have to see what the Fed says that May, in May 11th, it's coming up. So I think things are better now. And there's no refill issues, guys. That 30 day refill, the 30 days is just the first 30 days. The refills, once you have a relationship with that clinic, if they're a good clinic in Florida, Texas, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, New York, New Jersey, any place. I mean, there's clinics that are good. They're not like me, <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> but they're good, they're good enough. They're getting, you, you can use the app and we all work together. So con contact your Congress as above this MedWatch adverse event reporting program and tell them you're concerned. You don't want to go through withdrawal. The FDA put a warning on 2016, say that you know this, you want to look sharp. You want to have your data ducks in order. And please come on the Anabolic Doc app, subscribe to that. And we will next week have Rick Collins is going to break this down even further from the legal perspective. And you got to pay attention to this stuff, guys. This is huge news moving forward. Thank you so much.